sports writer for The Guardian. I'm very pleased to be here to introduce uh, Prince Ali today. I'm just going to make a short introduction. Uh, we're here at uh, Chatham House, uh, whose full title is obviously the Royal Institute of International Affairs, uh, which I think reflects the growing glo global importance of football, which is the sport that we're here to discuss, and FIFA, its world governing body, uh, which has obviously been hit by uh, scandals, uh, but is a uh, body which has governments, uh, presidents, rulers of countries um, who want to be associated with it and, and, and very much want to uh, host the, its prime asset, which is the World Cup, for, for the influence uh, and, if you like, the soft power uh, which it represents now. Um, Prince Ali bin al Hussein uh, of Jordan was the sole challenger in June to the FIFA president, the embattled FIFA president, Sepp Blatter, uh, in an election which uh, happened at quite an interesting time and interesting circumstances for FIFA after a week in which uh, the calm of Zurich was disturbed by uh, Swiss police on behalf of the FBI and other US authorities uh, arresting seven senior FIFA officials uh, at the Five Star Hotel where most of them were encamped on, uh, very, on indictments of very serious corruption charges and some of the corruption allegations against senior people at FIFA have been proven, uh, we don't have to say alleged against all of them anymore. Uh, so Prince Ali stepped up and was the sole challenger to set Blatter. Um, he gained 73 votes in the first round to, to set Blatter's 133, and then you withdrew in the second round, uh, which, which you've now said in your speech yesterday uh, was uh, because you said that you felt others were, were actually using you to make room for themselves, which is uh, obviously an interesting um, perspective, which I'm sure we'd like to explore. Um, Prince Ali, you're 39. Um, he... Uh, is a member of the ruling family in Jordan. Uh, he's been the president of the Jordanian Football Association since 1999, member of the executive committee of both the Asian Football Confederation and FIFA since 2011. And he's just announced, uh, fresh off the press yesterday, that you are going to stand formally for the election this time, with Sepp Blatter standing down early in February, this coming February 2016, and you're going to be standing against Michel Platini, uh, the president of the European football governing body, UEFA, who I think it would be fair to say would be considered a favourite at the moment. So I'd like to introduce Prince Ali, who's going to talk for 15, 20 minutes, and then take questions from the audience afterwards. The history of the relationship between my country and the United Kingdom goes far back in time to my late grandfather, and so each time I visit, I am humbled by the legacy of the many great men and women who have cemented that relationship in terms of strategic alliances, trade, and cultural ties. It is a great honor to speak here at the Royal Institute of International Affairs at Chatham House. It is a personal honor to be here too as my late father, King Hussein, spoke here 20 years ago. Interestingly, and perhaps a good omen, is that my father spoke here 20 years ago on February 27, 1996, 20 years before what I hope is my first day as FIFA president. This debate is about the future of the sport that we love and has set in motion a movement that has begun to see FIFA change for the better. However, let us not allow this election to become personal. It is not about me or Michel Platini. It's not about the years of contribution that Mr. Chung has made. It's about a change that only a new face, a new style, and a new leader can bring. We must not forget that it is the men and women representing the national associations who give up their time to make their voices heard. They carry with them the hopes and dreams of people who love football across the globe. We cannot let them down. From the children on every continent who spend every possible moment playing in every available space in a vibrant rainbow of club and national team colors, to the professionals who are their heroes and who make a living wearing those same jerseys. We all carry the hopes and dreams of the fans who leap out of their seats, 
and roar in the most powerful moments of the beautiful game. The fathers and sons who carve money out of household budgets to buy season tickets, the families who live, whose lives are punctuated by the matches they watch together at home, on television, and the young people for whom football provides precious respite from troubled lives. Throughout the world, eyes light up at the prospect of a new beginning. The sparkle we see is theirs. Of course, there are differing concerns and priorities, and it is clear that there are issues that divide us. But I believe we are united in the conviction that the world's game deserves a world-class governing body, and that we can and that we must do better to serve the sport we love and to safeguard the future of FIFA and of football. I stood in Amman yesterday and announced that I will seek election because FIFA is in danger. The future of football is in danger. And if we do not act now, it may be too late. Without an intact governing body, without a World Cup in which all regions of the world participate, without a brand that is attractive to sponsors, we will have nothing. We will get nothing and we will go nowhere. The facts are clear. Football has carried FIFA, but the beautiful game can, can, cannot save our governing body from itself any longer. It is time for us to take the first step, the first quiet step towards rebuilding football together. There's little to be gained by looking to the past. Looking back will help no one. We need to look forward together to a future characterized by the right to dignity, the right to develop, and the right to exist with integrity. I see what FIFA is, and I believe in what it can be. And I hope that you can share my vision. Join me in saying that we believe in the possibilities, that we know we can do better, that we will do better. I'm a National Association president. I understand our sport and the needs of the game at all levels around the world. But most importantly, I love football. And I've never lost my passion for the beautiful game we serve. Chanting crowds, wuvuzelas, and referees' whistles have been and will remain the soundtrack of my career in football administration. I remain connected to the game, and I believe that protecting the game and the players we serve, we serve are more important than anything else. As a former member of the FIFA Executive Committee, I tried my hardest to effect positive change at FIFA, always working collaboratively with committee members, be it in development, social responsibility, or the football committee. But as many of you know, no matter how hard, we, how hard we tried, no matter how honorable our efforts hoped to be, there were fruitless due, they were fruitless due to the state of the organization at large. I can guarantee that in my presidency, the democratic, transparent, collaborative, and service-oriented approach I have always favored will create an environment in which every confederation, every member association, and every executive committee member genuinely has a voice and a role to play in shaping our future. This election is about choosing a committed, qualified, and trustworthy president who can command the respect of member associations as well as stakeholders from across the game and across the world. But it is also about choosing a future for the sport and for FIFA. I have dared to imagine a future in, we, in which we are the very best that we can be. This vision is the fuel that has powered my candidacy. My program is the roadmap that I have designed together with the member associations, and I will need their help to make it a reality. If I am elected as the next president, I will deliver a virtuous circus, circle of development, football, and commercial success, supported by a FIFA that is a service organization and a model of good governance. I will lead a FIFA which embraces the highest standards of integrity and ethics, which is open, transparent, and encourages and welcomes debate. A FIFA which works according to a strategic plan rather than presidential whim. And I will, ensure, I will ensure all member associations have a national stadium worthy of that title, and that every single football association in the world has what it needs to play the game, including basic infrastructure and equipment. I will leverage improvements to FIFA's global brand alongside development and growth in the sport to attract more top sponsors and commercial partners. I will restore the sponsors who have severed ties with FIFA 
in recent times. And I will ensure that all member associations benefit from this increased commercial success. I will deliver a future for FIFA that we can all believe in. I've seen all over the world the power of football, what it can achieve, helping to create social cohesion where there is tension, bringing communities together for a shared celebration, and offering joy and hope to people who face daily hardship and struggle. For millions of people in the world, battling adversity is a daily reality. And for them, the importance of the beautiful game cannot be underestimated. Football has the power to bring welcome respite to regions bursting with life, but often burdened by problems. That is the power of football. But it cannot be just about power. It has to be about potential. And potential is what inspires us to be the very best that we can be. I see great potential for growth in football around the world, spearheaded by real success and top levels of the sport. It is well known that some of the greatest moments in history happen quietly, when the impossible seems to unfold quite suddenly and quite unexpectedly. Beneath the surface, FIFA is changing, and I believe that my candidacy will herald a future worthy of the world's game, a future that we can all be proud of. Thank you.